Leslie Curry from the Yale School of Public Health. Welcome back to our series on qualitative research methods. This module is on developing a qualitative research question. To remind us an overview of the modules, our goal in this series is to enhance our capacity to conceptualize, design, and conduct qualitative research in the health sciences. There are six modules in this series. The first is what is qualitative research? The second, developing a qualitative research question. The third and fourth address major qualitative study designs, interviews, and focus groups. The fifth presents an overview of qualitative data analysis. And the last module addresses the issue of scientific rigor in qualitative research. This module, in this module, we'll explore developing a qualitative research question. Well-formed questions are key to good research for a number of reasons. First, a well-formed research question defines the purpose of the research. This uh, is, is very important um, to set boundaries around the edges of our research question, to identify the gap in the literature that we're trying to address. Well-formed research questions can help us determine the appropriate methods in order to answer that question. We don't want to begin with, uh, I have students who come to me and say, I want to do a study using focus groups, or I'd like to do a study using interviews uh, with uh, patients and family members. Well, we don't uh, start with the methodology. Rather, we start with the research question, the knowledge gap that we're trying to fill, uh, and work then in that direction to determining the methodology that suits that question. A well-formed research question can also guide our study planning. So if we are very precise uh, in uh, scripting our research question, uh, this will help us in guiding uh, efforts to allocate resources and time in order to uh, implement the study and provide enough time for analysis um, and reporting. And lastly, a well-formed research question is critical, it's important uh, in quali quantitative methods as well, but critical in qualitative methods uh, for helping frame the analysis and the findings. Um, as we'll uh, see in the modules on in-depth interviews and focus groups, these approaches uh, generate uh, voluminous amounts of data, uh, often hundreds of pages of narrative transcripts, and uh, many potential directions uh, could be uh, followed in the analysis. Uh, a well-scoped research question will remind us what is the primary focus of this question and will help us um, focus ourselves in both the an analytic process and in the um, dissemination, the writing of the findings. So there are a number of topics that are well suited for qualitative research. Um, let's review together just, just a few examples. Um, the first is the role of organizational context in implementing a new technology or practice. So for example, uh, you might imagine electronic medical records uh, and a new um, software for EMR being implemented in a primary care clinic setting. What is the role of the organizational, uh, the broader environment in the implementing of that technology? What are the barriers and facilitators in that specific environment? A second broad area of topics are complex social processes. Um, you might imagine um, uh, the dynamics between formal and informal caregivers and uh, caring for a frail, homebound, older adult living in the community. What are those uh, dynamics like? The third, patient perceptions of healthcare access and quality. Um, in this instance, we might be interested in the patient experience of uh, informed consent discussions with a uh, physician. And lastly, the beliefs and motiv uh, motivations underlying health behaviors is uh, a potential focal area for qualitative research. Um, for example, what is an individual's preference around um, preventive screening procedures uh, for breast cancer or colon cancer? Um, so these are just some, give you a sense of some topics that are well suited for uh, a qualitative methodology, but of course there are there are a whole uh, range of possibilities. So let's move to conceptualizing a qualitative research question. What does it mean to, uh, to develop a question that's going to give us those uh, benefits that we reviewed uh, earlier? First, a qualitative research question must be inductive and exploratory. We don't come to the question with any uh, assumptions or hypotheses about what is going on, rather uh, very open uh, exploration of the phenomenon of interest. A qualitative research question is framed as a research question, an aim or objective. Again, there are no um, 
uh, hypotheses that we're uh, setting out to test, per se. Uh, conceptualizing a research question in qualitative traditions really requires very careful attention to focusing on a single phenomenon, concept, or idea. Again, because the risk um, uh, the risk is that there will be uh, much generated in, by way of the data uh, that may be relevant to our topic, um, but also perhaps tangent tangential. So the focus um, is really very critical for feasibility and for answering that uh, particular gap uh, with precision. So let's uh, look at writing a research question. Uh, we begin a research question stating the goal using a verb. So common verbs are um, to characterize to describe, uh, to understand. The second uh, sort of principle in writing a research question is to identify the topic of interest. Uh, so we begin with our verb. We're going to characterize, understand, describe, and then the topic of interest. What is it uh, specifically uh, that this uh, research uh, study will address? Important to use neutral or non-directional language. This gets back to the principle of being exploratory. Again, we don't have assumptions. So we're not looking, uh, for instance, only to facilitators of, um, uh, of adoption of a new practice in a hospital setting, but rather uh, non-directionally exploring the process of implementation itself, both positive and negative dimensions. A research question must define the sample and the setting, again, with as much um, precision as possible. The precision uh, is really critical in a qualitative research question, again, because it, uh, it gives boundaries um, to, to the question. So let's review together some sample qualitative research questions. This first question uh, was uh, from a study done by a clinical scholar in the Robert Wood Johnson program, Kelly Duran, who is interested in the care of uh, patients in the emergency department. This is the um, research question for her study. She sought to understand interpersonal and system level factors relevant to delivering health care to emergency department patients who are homeless. So if we look back at those guiding principles, uh, we begin with a verb. We're going to understand this phenomenon. We name the topic with, uh, with boundaries around uh, the edges of what we're interested in looking at. Here she was very clear uh, to say she was interested in both interpersonal and system level factors that might be relevant to delivering care in the ED. And again, what is the, the patient setting, uh, the patient population, and the setting? She's interested in patients who are homeless. And so this uh, very clearly outlines the objective of, of her particular research study. Let's look at another example. Here, a study by Emily Churlin and her team here at the Yale Global Health Leadership Institute. This is a study uh, interested in um, um, hospital performance and care of patients with heart attacks. And the research question for this project was to identify hospital discharge processes that may be associated with better performance in hospital AMI care as measured by mortality rates. So here again, we have the verb. She's going to identify these processes, the topic itself, and the setting. And lastly, uh, this study our team uh, undertook here at the Global Health Leadership Institute um, to uh, describe the experiences of people who are in leadership roles in Sub-Saharan Africa. And this research question is to characterize the experiences of individuals in key healthcare leadership roles in Sub-Saharan Africa. So again, to name the topic, the population, and the setting very clearly in the research question. So let's take a couple of minutes together to critique a research question. Uh, this is uh, a question brought to me by a student. Uh, he uh, was an interested in contraception use broadly, and he came with this research question. The purpose of this study is to understand the knowledge, attitudes, beliefs, preferences, and barriers regarding contraception use among women. So if we parse this a little bit against the criteria that we uh, reviewed earlier, uh, we want to be careful that the, uh, the study, as it's defined in the research question, is feasible, and that there are boundaries that are manageable, and that the specific phenomenon we're interested in is very clear. So here, uh, if we look at the topic as being knowledge, attitudes, beliefs, preferences of barriers, um, it's really quite a waterfront to cover. 
uh, frankly, impossible, maybe in our lifetimes. Uh, and also, we want to be precise about the setting and the population. Women is just, um, you know, rather broad. So we worked together to craft a question that would meet those uh, criteria that we reviewed together earlier. And the final question uh, looked like this. Uh, the study was to characterize barriers to contraception use, so very specifically focused on the barriers themselves, among young Latina women at high risk for unintended pregnancy. Uh, this, uh, this question addressed a very uh, specific gap in the literature, uh, was clearly uh, much more feasible uh, to implement, and very precise in the nature of what was going to be looked at in terms of the data collection and analysis focusing. So a few uh, concluding comments. A well-developed research question is essential for the success of a study for the reasons that we've described. So it's not as simple as it seems, and yet it's critically important um, to the success of a study. So spend time uh, developing and honing your research question. Invest time in defining the knowledge gap. Really so important um, to be sure that we are in fact contributing <laughs> to the advancement of science. And so really critical to master the literature, to know what is known and what is not known about your focal topic. Ensure the question is feasible. If we think back to the study on contraception, uh, you know, unpacking all of those dimensions of contraception use among women uh, would not have been feasible. Use the, the research question to guide the choice of method and set the boundaries for analysis. Finally, this applies to really all the research that we do. Uh, be sure it passes the so what test. So thank you for your attention.